Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much to Erica Solberg and the Western Kentucky University and Idea Fest team for having me. I apologize that I can't be there in person, had some emergent family business to take care of, um, but I still wanted to present to you and be a part of this. Uh, so here we go. Chasing Willy Wonka, uh, leaving corporate America in search of the ultimate golden ticket. Really, this is just talking about how I got into chocolate. Everyone's like, how did you get into chocolate? You know, um, where did the idea come from? You know, how do you come up with your chocolates? You know, it's, it's, do you eat all the chocolates? All that kind of stuff. Um, I obviously don't eat them all because I wouldn't have anything to sell. But um, nevertheless, you know, one of the things I've learned is telling the story and telling your story is very important. And this is really just, you know, the story about, you know, how I fell in love with chocolate and, and, and what we do on a day to day basis and, you know, really how we try to have fun with it. Uh, so, again, my name is Philip Ashley Ricks. Uh, I know in the very beginning, people used to say, well, where's Ashley? And, you know, and you're Philip. So where is that your sister or your wife? I'm like, well, that's both my names. Uh, growing up as a kid, I used to hate that middle name, and that was, and my mom would call it out loud in public when I and whenever I got in trouble or something because she knew it would embarrass me. You know, <clears throat> fast forward to today, she is like, "Well, you're welcome." <clears throat> and my dad didn't want the middle name either, but it, it all worked out. So as they say, mom knows best. Um, one of my favorite quote, quotes here, imperfection is beauty, madness is genius, and it's better to be absolutely ridiculous than absolutely boring um, by Marilyn Monroe. I'm a big quote uh, guy and uh, amongst other things, but uh, definitely, you know, going into chocolate was completely different. My background, uh, went to college you know, you know, like like everyone else or a lot of people, oh, you got to go be a teacher, doctor, lawyer. And I actually was a chemistry major uh, with the express intent to go to medical school. Uh, and then, you know, lo and behold, decided to go towards the end of my college career, uh, chose to go into the business world uh, just because I realized I wanted to deal with people. I couldn't be confined to one space long. I think that was more of it than anything. So um, <clears throat> ended up getting into corporate sales, worked for companies like FedEx, Apple for, you know, over 10 years and traveled all over the place, the world, you know, mainly dealt with um, supply chain solutions and logistics, heavy freight, uh, export, import, that kind of thing. Uh, but that's what I did, you know, so but one day just kind of woke up and was like, you know what? I'm going to be a chocolatier. Uh, I think I was living in Baltimore around that time and just decided that, you know, this is what I was going to do is, you know, the breadcrumbs over time and throughout my life kind of led me to this. And, uh, you know, I was, I was looking to get into the food business, you know, wanted to transition into becoming a chef, decided I didn't want to be in the restaurant and I wanted to use, you know, my current uh, skills and in profession in a way that I can, I was like, you know, so the consumer goods industry made sense. Uh, well, what can I do to be in the food business and what would be cool to me at least? And, you know, chocolate, you know, kind of started seeing chocolate around. I was like, well, why aren't they putting a stick of gum in chocolate? I'm really referring to the whole, um, Willy Wonka, um, Charlie and the chocolate fractive thing where, you know, they have the bubble gum with the blueberry pie at the end and all that kind of stuff. So I really wanted to create chocolate uh, that incorporated, you know, just all sorts of flavors and uh, different surprises, if you will. Um, and this was 10, 11 years ago now um, when I when this idea was was birth. Uh, and then I proceeded to spend, you know, the next three years um you know, studying and learning everything about chocolate. Uh, and as you see here, you know, this is what we do. We call it edible art. Um, you know, we have chocolates. Everything is hand painted, airbrushed, paintbrushed. We throw paint. Um, 
you know, for, you know, the visual effects to achieve, you know, whatever it is we're looking to achieve. Uh, but the ingredients and the formulas that I create are really um, the foundation of the art. So things like, um, you know, roasted jalapeno, creme fraiche, avocado lime, or French blue cheese, or um, Thai lemongrass, mint, white balsamic vinegar, and um, uh, Pequot extra virgin olive oil, or, you know, uh, fig jam, goat cheese, and port wine, uh, to, you know, a, a saffron, beurre blanc, and caramelized banana. You know, there's all kind of things that we do, and, you know, very elegant. Uh, we put cheeses in chocolate. We put, we have a barbecue chocolate, uh, you know, for, valentines and that sort of things we you know we did chocolates that look like the conversation hearts so just constantly trying to innovate but particularly when it comes to flavor that's really where my focus is and, and where I pay a lot of attention and a lot of my research over the years has been spent on learning not just about food and the different ingredients out there but how people taste you know how perception uh is generated through our olfactory and through our taste buds and so using again a lot of the science but also the psychology of of eating and of food uh, that is what i spend a lot of my time and honestly people are like how do you come up with the flavors and how you do this I spend a lot of that time daydreaming you know i'm always just thinking about chocolate and more so what can i put in chocolate and how can i push the envelope and just how um far out into left field I can go, uh, you know, with putting things in those chocolates, you know, for the, we've done crown and coke chocolates and, uh, you know, all sorts of different infusions with wine and, uh, liqueurs. And again, like I said, cheeses and that sort of thing, uh, using the finest chocolates and putting 23 karat gold around a piece of chocolate and, um, uh, using things like Caribbean hot sauce um, from fire roasted scotch bonnets. But that's, that's you know, what we do. Um, so a big piece of, of what, who we are as a brand and, and, and what I've learned over my time. And, you know, we opened the store, the boutique, uh, five years ago. It'll be five years this November. Um, if you noticed earlier, I said, you know, I, I started this journey 11 years ago. So, you know, three years of that time was literally two of that. I never even touched chocolate. All I did was read, research, um, contemplate, uh, and that sort of thing. I'm self-taught when it comes to chocolate. I uh, did not go to culinary school, did not go into any chocolate programs or anything, particularly there weren't any around that time. Um, and so, uh, I really worked hard and, and thankfully ended up just having an affinity and a, a gift for, you know, uh, flavor composition and, and, and creating these things. I have a, a, a sensitive palate, so I detect um, flavor and I, and I smell um, well, so to speak. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so in that, you know, in, in creating all of this, and is in particular when we first opened the store, something I learned very, very uh, early on was that people have to buy into you before they want to buy from you. Uh, and so, you know, everyone's always asking, you know, how did you get in chocolate? What's your story? You know, because they want to uh, be able to find common ground or be uh, inspired or just say, hey, I like this because I'm about to buy a $5 piece of chocolate. Uh, so I want to know a little bit, bit more about who you are and what you do. Um, and so along that path and over time, you know, as the story began to build and develop and evolve and, and that sort of thing, you know, um, people and news and media and that sort of thing began to um, get wind of us and, you know, Forbes in particular. And so in 2000, uh, what was it, 2014 or 2015, um, Forbes did an article, um, and it was titled, um, real life Willy Wonka, uh, wins with exciting new flavors. And so, uh, that really helped catapult, you know, 
me and 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 what we're doing and you know from there we've been in everything from garden and gun to essence to uh being featured on cnn uh, uh you know n numerous uh media uh wings you know i've i've curated dinners at the james beard house and and done a host of other things so um again the story is very central to uh, and, and something that I always say is that um, every piece of chocolate should tell a story, you know. And so our chocolates have names because, again, they have a background and a reason for existing. And the ingredients that were uh, pulled together to compose uh, this orchestrated uh, piece of edible art. And so these are all the things that go into, you know, what we do all the way to the packaging that we put them in and how we present. And that's even evolving. Um, and so if I were in front of you, you'd see, you know, typically I'm wearing either t-shirts and jeans and sneakers. Um, I'll throw a blazer on at times, but, you know, transitioning from a corporate environment where I'm wearing suits and can't have much facial hair and that sort of thing to now have, you know, full sleeves uh, tattoos, hands, tattoos on my hands and things like that. And, you know, and, and the irony is I deal with more, uh, high level executive CEOs of major companies, uh, dealing with them one-on-one -on -one or, or teams more today than I did when I was actually in that environment. Um, and, 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 and one, and, and what that basically, um, has taught me and shown me is that, you know, when, you are great at what you do and you spend time to perfect whatever your craft is, you begin to stand out. And and that and being different in that way or in excellence gets people's attention. And so, you know, people that are uh in positions of power and they seek your influence and seek your advice as well. Uh and so we do a lot with corporations and particularly with corporate gifting and helping them develop gifting strategies, major gifting campaigns, um, you know, nationwide and globally and working with brands all over. And one of the things I always say is, well, what does your brand taste like? You know, and so I'm sitting down with, you know, employees and stakeholders of companies and, and learning the DNA of the company, the culture of the company, but even things like what's your favorite food, what's your favorite drink, what's your favorite color, and, and, and honestly taking this data back and developing a flavor that's true to that organization or that company, you know, so we're not just, you know, cookie cutter, template um making chocolate you know we're really designing very thoughtful and uh you know provoke you know provocative chocolates even uh that that exemplify that brand but you know nowadays because i'm doing what i love i get to you know i'm into all kinds of cool t-shirts and that sort of thing and so um but this allows me to do it more so it's just sometimes it's just funny to you know to think about that, which again, being desirable is big. And, you know, we've had the pleasure and the honor to do pretty much every major award show uh, out there. We've done, you know, the Grammys, the Emmys, the Oscars, all in recent years. We just did all the, we did 25,000 chocolates for the Governor's Ball for the 69th Primetime Emmys, which was just this past September. Um, earlier in that year, we did the Oscars, and the year previous in 2016, we did the um, huge after part, the the official celebration for the Grammys. Plus, we did all the backstage chocolates and things like that, chocolates for the dressing rooms, and so on. And so, we've been able to really get in front of a lot of influential uh, people, and 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 even have some. Uh, some pretty cool celebrities as, as some of our uh, clients um, as a result. So something that I always um, try to remember uh, when we when I work on building the company and growing the company and how we evolve uh, as a brand and, and you know the chocolates we make and the moves we uh, begin to do is that culture eats strategy for breakfast and so. 
you know, what is the culture of Philip Ashley Chocolates or what are what's the culture of the, you know, relationships, I always say, is our number one currency. You know, that's how we have become who we become. That's how we're going to be who we are meant to be uh, down the line. Uh, so being able to do these things um, and uh, really be around everywhere uh, and as we kind of, as we evolve into a more internet based company uh, which is our focus uh, you can always find us online you know we're available 24 hours a day in that capacity um, and just really being that gifting company that people seek out when it's a special occasion you know um, birthday anniversary special holiday milestone promotion you name it there's always a day where someone needs to celebrate and, and Philip Ashley chocolates wants to be that perfect gift uh, for that so we're much more than just a chocolate company um, we, we're a gifting uh, company and, and so um, we want to be the gift that you give to share those moments that you want to remember most uh, so that is who we are and what we do and so, with that said, here's how you reach out to me. Um, definitely, everyone, please follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Um, you know, my number's there, my email's there. Uh, and, and in particular, if you want to try the chocolates, go to the website uh, and check us out. And we will always make ourselves available to you. But we ship nationwide. We even ship international. Uh, so we can get it to you and get it to you as beautifully as it left our table. Uh, so again, I want to thank everyone for your time. Once again, apologize for not being able to be there, but I definitely hope uh, that you got something out of this, and I look forward to any questions um, later. Thank you.